how far back he is. Look at the clouds above us. The wind's coming across. 500 kilometres, 161 laps. The revs start to build and the 500 returns to Sandown. A very poor start from Todd Kelly. Marcus Ambrose goes zipping away down to turn one. Some moves by Paul Radisic. He's jostling, jostling for position into turn one. Rick Kelly gets contact with Radisic at turn one. And Ambrose goes off in the distance. Boy, Todd Kelly's going to play it cool here. He had a terrible start. The winter bottom car off the racing line coming out of turn one. Everyone's got to cool it here. You've got 500 kilometres of racing. It's not going to be one in the first two turns. And the field still bumping and nudging each other as they come onto the back straight for the first time. This is a nervous moment. Todd Kelly was completely trapped on the line there. And I think that he either misread the signals or just completely missed the jump. But he got swamped by the pack. Cold tyres on this opening lap. And look at how quick this thing is on cold tyres. Car number four. It's just been quick on everything. Cold tyres, hot tyres, full tanks, low tanks of fuel. An absolute jet. The Ambrose Eagle Ford all throughout qualifying. Absolutely slammed him yesterday. Half a second faster. And he's showing that speed in the opening lap of this one. They want to get out the front and dominate. So it looks like they've sorted themselves out fairly well as they come round turn nine. Onto the big straight for the first time. The Ford flags and the Holden flags waving in this massive grandstand. One minute 19 flat, the standing lap time. And it's a 1.1 second margin from Ambrose to Kelly on the opening lap. Here's the start. Keep your eyes on the number one car of Todd Kelly. Got dug down a little bit there, about five, ten metres off the start line. Ambrose is crystal clear. He's got no dramas. He had to launch it and it looked from, from here as though he had to have a double dip. It's launched and then it's coughed and then he's had to punch the clutch and go again. Remember they've got 120 litres of fuel on, it's nearly 100 kilos of fuel. Big time problem with the 17. Oh, oh, he's hit Brad Jones as well. Johnson, Junior Johnson's causing a massive problem. And both of them are there now. Car 17 and 18 caught in the jam and you can throw car 16 of Greg Ritter in there as well. That was triggered by somebody getting out of shape right at the crest of the hill. What a disaster for Dick Johnson racing. Big fight back here in qualifying, getting Junior into the top 10. And now it's come all unstuck for car 17. He's gone right to the back of the pack. They're not sure how bad the damage is to the car. We'll find out very shortly. Dave, keep cool. How's your steering wheel? Your steering wheel's great. Yes, you want me to come in? Keep going. Well, there's discussion at DJR on the headsets. Max Wilson has survived in car 18. There's smoke pouring from the front of the car. He's got damage to the front left and also to the right rear as well so that's the guard rubbing on that one and oh it's all gone horribly pear-shaped for DJR at the same point in time here's car 17 gonna do a quick inspection here not sure what juniors reported back to the engineers the front I know is also caved in on the Repco Valvoline 34 entry as well. So they're gonna to have to watch the temperatures. There's <laughs> headlight as well. There's a tail light assembly out of that car. Greg Russ was down there as the car came in. Anything to report, Rusty? Well, Matty, I'm down here, in fact, with Warren Luff, Dick, uh, with, uh, with Steve Johnson's teammate. You've had a chance to look at the damage, a disappointing start. Oh, man, it's a terrible start. Um, Stephen's got a good start, was doing well. It looks like he's copped a hit in the rear end, just going down, down into um, Dandenong Road. And, and from there, he was just a passenger. And, and worse luck that he got cleaned up by Max. But um, once Stephen was across the track, Max unfortunately had nowhere to go. So not the start we were looking for. They're now trading lap speed punches bill because Ambrose on the last lap set the new fastest lap of the race a 112.1 and a 12.2 for the number one HRT car and this is Winterbottom getting crossed up at one sprinkles of rain down there so a trap for young players tiny percentage of the grip has gone away and he's gone <laughs> actually a long way out of his way to rejoin <laughs> they actually won't take a very uh, fond view of that you're supposed to technically rejoin as quickly as you can and Paul Morris and John Faulkner have done their change. Faulkner getting a hurry along from the Morris crew as they tried to make it as quick as possible. Faulkner back in the saddle. Todd comes in. Mark Scaife is about to jump into car number one. Daryl Beatty's on the spot. 
Yes, there's a driver change. Mark Scaife in the car, fuel going in, the wets come off. Just having a close look at those wets, it looked like they were carrying some serious temperature now near with that track drying out. Even with some of the cars going by now, they're getting off the dry line onto the wet line. Rick Kelly also came in too, seeing coming in behind Todd as they rolled into pit lane there. So the Kmart crew busy as well. Fresh pads. Go, 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 go. And the HRT. The steering wheel back, the steering wheel back. Scopey just pumps the pedal to make sure that he brings those pistons out and gets the pads up to the disc face. What can happen is... Can you hear can me, Mark? Just establishing radio comms. Oh. If you don't do that and you haven't pressured them up, you can arrive down at the first corner and go for the pedal cam and find that there's nothing there except a bit of rear brake. And that's so happened before to, to most of us. Yeah, I've, I've seen uh, cars end up in the fence down there with that and uh, Scapey didn't have a lot of pit road there either. Now Ambrose is out. Russell Ingle has an insert to throw into the seat and he'll jump in. Daryl Beattie. Just watching it. Mark was a little slow getting out of the car there trying to disconnect his radio. Pat change again like HRT. Wet's off. Everything looks pretty calm okay, here at this stage. Looking forward to this battle between Russell Mingle and Mark Scaife. Nice stop. Good stop. He's got the belt twisted on the left. Yeah. Oh dear. Move your stuff for the um, HRT guys. It's done up but he hasn't actually got it tension down so he'll have to turn it a little bit on his shoulder and then give it another yank. Rusty. Well, Neil, it's been a really long stop for the number 17 Dick Johnson Racing entry. The reason being they've had to do the driver change through the passenger door. Steve Johnson had to climb out the He's passenger gone door because it's of that. Sorry, Rusty. Rusty. Ingle has gone off. First at turn corner. one. You first can't... corner. First lap. I could see the. Uh, I could. I could see the. The. Uh, the horizon rotating round through the windows. I knew there was something going on. He was trying to wrestle with his belt. He's rotated the thing on cold slicks. Clearly the biggest drama of the day has just unfolded. Car number four, Vingle and Ambrose in the ditch. So there's the battle over the last four laps. You can see Scaife chomp, chomp, chomp. And then Murphy responding again. What's Murph got left in this car? We've seen a few puffs of smoke under brakes and through the corners. And both of these guys will, will run out of the current fuel window at about lap 128. We're estimating a race finish around lap 148. But if it does rain wholesale, they'll come in and take wets, but they'll take the opportunity of topping up as well. That'll at least get them through to the end of the motor race in terms of fuel. Car 20 looping around down at turn seven. The Ray Johnson car. Second of the Orcon entries, and I think he's done it on his own. Picks the throttle up and just gets himself out of what would have been a pretty sticky position. Well, there's the hail. What next here? That's pit lane, of course, the low-level shot. And boy, there's been some drama in that particular stretch of road this afternoon. We estimate around 148 laps of this race. Mark Scaife under threat. His lead is down to 35 and a half seconds. Matthew, if this gets bad enough and it continues like this, there's every chance it could actually be red flag because the Oops. track becomes undrivable. Like that. Like that. Ooh. Adam Macro, my car. Karen Hossack car is that car? right into That's the my car. <laughs> right into the sand trap. Well, I can, hey, here's a tip, it needs a wheel alignment. <laughs> you, you know what, Cedo? There's about 30,000 people saying that about their car in the car park, <laughs> topping it from the hail. Grant Kenny. Oh. They may well stop this, Grant. Oh, there's Paul Dumbrell and Thomas Mazera heavily into the wall. Sorry, Grant. So here we go. Safety car will peel off. Mark Scaife will lead him across the start-finish line. And we're back into the better electrical 500 at Sandown. The return of the 500 to Melbourne. And boy, hasn't there been some drama. Throwing everything at us, Marco, as they head up to turn one. Look at the spray coming back. You wouldn't know what's going on in front of you. This will be dynamite at this turn you want to go in there safety first see them just gingerly spreading oh. through there you just get nervous looking at him going through there it must be so hard neil and glenn to get temperature back in your tires when you're sitting behind a safety car not only in dry conditions but in cold wet weather there's no temperature in that rubber and they've been stationary now or not stationary but sort of been unactive for a long period of time so you your mindset cools out a little bit as well. You've got to get yourself back in to the groove, feel the amount of grip available. And of course, if you're anything behind about position four, you can't see, Wait. so it's driving by Braille. That's right. And um, actually, Scaife here be, um, being leading the pack here. He's, he's a bit of the uh, venturer here to, to see what the track's like. So yeah. 
the rest can gauge themselves off uh, off mark at the moment in braking areas and um, speeds through the corners and where the track is quite bad. But look at Vansy, Vansy's coming through. He's, he's doing good. Go, boy, go. <laughs> Things have changed around a bit when our first downpour was headed towards us and Marcus Ambrose was leading that race still then. HRT told Todd Kelly to just sit there and bide your time. Let him be the wet weather pioneer. Now it's up Oops. to Mark Scape and Wind Cup goes off. Lowndes follows him. Speaking of wet weather pioneers, they may have got a couple of cars out of the way of Jason Richards. The second place man, there it is, car 44. So that's made his job easier if he's going to track down Scape. 6.9 okay, seconds. Mate. Head down, it's all good. That was directed at you, Cito. And sorry about that. That was courtesy of uh, Craig Lowndes' <laughs> radio. 6.9 seconds, the gap between our race leader and second place, Jason Richards. You can see the struggle these cars are having with turn one. Trying to get grip, front end grip, so they can make the corner. It's been the location of a number of incidents this weekend. Escape. Jason Richards, Luke Yulden, all on the lead lap, and it's a lap down. Murphy, John Bow, Stephen Richards, Russell Engel in the top seven. John. Trying to fight back and give some valuable points to Marcus Ambrose. John's car just sounds awful there, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's probably it? lost a bit of grunt as well, so it's got kind of enforced traction control, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, actually, they'd be sitting with that. Actually, this is the second time this year yes. they've had a header problem because at Queensland, um, in the 300k race up there, John had the same problem. Maybe it's the green on the car, I reckon green's yeah, bad luck. Yeah, it could well be. Well, I want you to go and tell Bradley after the race that he's hard on headers and see what his response is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Car 33, the second of the Valvoline Cummins. Valvoline Repco cars. Just keep an eye on the engine water temperature, please. And that's Mike Exel, What's the that? engine builder, telling young Jamie Winkup, you protect my motors, young What's lad. What's actually wrong with the front end? Oh, it's just broken, oh. I've got no steering, it's uh... I think it's broken a steering. wobbling at the front side, just like the, the wheel flapping. There's no steering, something's broken. You can hear the wobble in Jamie's voice. Yeah. Yeah. He's oh. been driving with Alan Simonson. That's Jamie's interesting, driver. on that oh, previous lap. 27.5 for Jason Richards, a 28 for Scape. 6.4 seconds the gap. Instinctively drivers always want to get back to the pit lane. But often uh, you can find yourself in conflict with your technical crew who say, you know, why don't you switch it off because you've just chewed up another $20,000 or whatever it may be. <laughs> I might have got a boring out from Cedo at some stage. <laughs> Look at this bag of cars. Look at the amount of spray here. Well, let's look at this. Oh, well, that might have been when the steering broke. I'm not sure it was contact with car 15 or whether that was just the point where something in the front end went all right. I'll tell you, there's some interesting stuff going in the battle for the lead too over the break. It's down to 3.6 seconds now, the gap between Scape and Jason Richards in second in the Team Dynamic Commodore. Julia Ingle. Julia there. Ingle, yep. Marcus Ambrose watching on because every position that Russell makes up there's more points in the bank for both drivers and in terms of championship remember Marcus is leading the championship race at the moment down to Daryl Beattie in pit lane Daryl yes Matty a little bit of info on that car number one at the moment I spoke to the team or I actually spoke to Todd Kelly he said that they're pulling, uh, pulling a few fuses on that car at the moment they've got low voltage but I guess it can't be too bad if they're real serious they'd probably pull the radio as well at this stage. Recap your PlayStation 2 race score. Mark Scape with a 3.6 second lead over Jason Richards. Luke Yulden in third position. Fourth is Greg Murphy. Fifth is Brad Jones and John Bow. Sixth Ambrose and Russell Ingle has moved up in the sixth position. There's the battle for the lead Matty. And there must be some sort of drama with Scape's car. That's down under three seconds now. 2.8, there's his teammate. That's not the car of the moment. Car 44, Jason Richards, the Kiwi, flying in second. And closing the gap hand over fist to our race leader, Mark Scape, with only moments, minutes remaining in this race. One of the problems is that uh, when you've got everything switched on in a wet race, you, you, those screen heaters draw a huge amount of current. And... Uh, if you've got an electrical drama and you need to start bailing out of things, one of the last things that Mark will want to bail out of is being able to see clearly, but if he's under pressure he needs to see clearly, and that could also be one of the problems here. Look at him go. Jason Richards, the 27-year-old from Nelson in New Zealand. This was the incident with his teammate, car 45. It's on the approach to turn nine. 
but under five minutes remaining in this run and Jason Richards has got his head down there is the sinister black team dynamic Commodore headlights ablaze and he's got the leader in his gun sights he's got good pace in that thing sure at the does. he's really honking could be state of tyres it could be the chassis balance it could be some other issue with Scaife's car I'll remind you of this race the situation the race officially finishes when the leader crosses the line after 16.45 or 4.45 Eastern Standard Time. So there's only a few minutes here. Marco, he's halved the gap in that last lap. Jason Richards, he's halved it now down to 1.4 seconds. Before that, it was a 2.8 second gap. And that's what one and a half seconds looks like on the Sandown circuit. Well, Jason Richards started his career in Formula Ford in New Zealand. Became a junior driver with the BMW. New Zealand team, he was a multiple class champion on domestic soil but he was so impressive when Team Kiwi made their debut in V8 Supercars in 2000. And look at him, Team Dynamic, Simon Wells there. Have, have a look at Oscar, he'll, his little heart will blow straight out his ears in a minute, he'll have so much oil <laughs> pressure going there at the moment. That's Kieran Wills, Kieran the team Wills. owner. Oscar's further to the left, but uh, he loves to get wound up about motor racing and he'll be know, well wound at the moment. If Jason Richards can pull this off, and remember there's four minutes remaining, three and a half, four minutes remaining in this race. If Jason Richards can pull this off and get him and Simon Wills onto the podium, that makes Wills a back-to-back -back 500 champion. He won the corresponding race at Queensland 500, his one and only race victory. Richards has never won a race in the V8 Supercar Championship. Mark Scape has won 34 of them. Here's some more action with Paul Morris getting into trouble with Andrew Jones in the Triple Eight car. Morris slipping, sliding, going off the track once more, and Jones joins him. It's a race against the clock, though, out at front. Scaife, the lead now is 0.7 of a second. And the clock's just gone 4.42 and 5 seconds, so again at 4.45, the minute the lead, once we pass that moment in time, 4.45, double zero, <laughs> as soon as the Look lead car this. crosses the control line that's it now jason richards is a relative rookie in v8 supercar terms scaife making his 144th start richards has only done 33 starts it's his 34th career start in v8 supercar body language on mark's car suggests that he's just a bit out of grip at the moment glenn yeah, yes, for sure. He's um, he's Look at really this. struggling for traction. He's going to have a crack at him. No, he decides to back off at the moment. Absolutely, there's problems with Mark Scave's car. It's totally unsettled. A race against the clock at the end of an extraordinary day. Richards has a look around the outside. Now he'll have a look at the inside. He's right up behind the number one Holden Racing Team Commodore. Maximum pressure. The Kiwi's going to keep it cool here, though. Mark Scave is pretty clever. Oh, side by side in this sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat. What can he do here? Where is he? He's still there. So he has got a real tough task on his hand, even though Scaife oh is Oh, a great job. It's 4.43. They have to finish at 4.45. So this is incredible stuff. What a finish for the better electrical 500. Hard under brakes into turn one. Scaife gets the position. Slippery, slippery track conditions. Almost a touch. Scapers. Jason Richards. We hear the scape has switched off his red rain light. That's the light, bright red light they have to have on the back of the car. Now, whether that's going to affect oh. switch the wiper off as well. The legality of the car in terms of finishing the race without its rain light, only time will tell. Look at how wide he's making this HRT Commodore as they come up the back straight. Mark Scape is pretty much shutting down everything you can find inside the cockpit. That line that uh, Jason was taking to try and go around the outside at turn eight could reveal a spot for him if he can get underneath Scafe when they get to, to nine. Less than one minute remaining. Are they going to cross the line before? Yes, they will. So there's going to be another lap after this one. How long can Scafe hold him out? Down the inside goes Jason Richards. The oh, they both go. Oh, no, he's gone into the they gravel. They both go. No, Jason no, Richards can't right. salvage it from there. Oh, oh Scafe oh. gets out. Unbelievable. Can not get it going? Believe it. Same trip. Absolutely unbelievable, and the space of Kieran Will says it all as Jason Richards finishes what was a great scrap with Mark Scape in the ditch. And Scape has been let off the hook, no question about it. He's going to have to complete one more lap. It's 4.44 and 50 seconds, so that means one more lap. He's missed it by 10 seconds. Mark Scape. 
is going to survive, assuming his car can go another three kilometres. He's had all sorts of battles thrown at him. And who would have thought that Jason Richards and Team Dynamic Car 44, when looking at the top spot on the podium, found themselves staring into the gravel. 38 seconds, the gap back to Luke Hilbert's down to 29 seconds now. The Ford in seconds escape has a half a minute buffer over at the next place car. If he can lift this one home, he'll take the 500. Everybody's had a crack at him, including the heavens. And at the end of the day, these guys, both Scape and Todd Kelly, have shown that they've not only got themselves the car speed and the setup and everything back in order, but also the pure determination and skill to hold off challenges like that. In awful conditions, Scape goes past the guy that could have claimed the spot off him. The rain continues to pour down. Mark Scape, he's not going to start breathing and celebrating just yet because anything can happen. What a finish. The clock has ticked over. And after a blue blitz in the championship, Mark Scape and Todd Kelly turn the tide and win the Sandown 500. Scape's first win since the first round of the season. Todd Kelly's second win of his career. What an effort, and what a great effort too from this young man, Luke Yulden in car 31, and Stephen Ellery, the super cheap auto Ford, claims second position, their best ever finish. Two beauty, Luke, that's the go, mate. You know what position you finished in? Wait, tell me. P2, Luke, P2 to the mighty Holt race team. <laughs> the words he wanted to hear, and Luke Yulden deserves to be congratulated on surviving an incredibly tough day and his first crack at Sandown in a V8 supercar. Kelly and